Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Invin and today I'm going to be bringing you guys a video on the Barbarian class. Yes, that is right guys. I'm bringing you guys a video on the class which uses the Great Axe and the Hatchet and I've named this the Barbarian class because I feel it fits very aptly with the playstyle and the intention of this class. Now I'm going to go over things like the attributes, the abilities and passives which I use with this class as well as kind of like the play style, how you want to be focusing enemies and where you want to be positioning yourself in fights. And of course, I'll go over weight class towards the end as well there because that is something where you can kind of go one of two ways with it. So we're going to have a very action-packed video for you guys, but hopefully you do find it useful. And if you have been using the Great Axe and the Hatchet yourself, hopefully this points you in the right direction of how to make this the best possible build because this is by far the best build I have found for it, playing it through open beta, closed beta, previews, and now of course into full launch as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and let's jump straight into it so in terms of abilities first then the first ability i used on the great axe is reap this is where you extend your axe five meters pulling foes towards you and dealing 110 percent weapon damage second ability i like to use here is gravity well which is where you throw an axe to create a vortex that pulls foes to its center for three seconds and ends with a damaging burst dealing 125 percent weapon damage in a range of 10 meters and finally you've got charge which is where you charge 10 meters Meters dealing 120% weapon damage when you reach a target or press left mouse button. On the hatchet, the abilities you use are Berserk, which is where you trigger a Berserk mode that will increase all attack damage by 20% whilst active. Berserk mode will be active for 12 seconds. Cooldown will trigger once Berserk ends. You also take Raging Torrent, which is where you perform four fast attacks, each dealing 90% weapon damage. And finally, you take Feral Rush, which is where a sprinting melee attack that causes the player to leap forward, hitting twice. The first hit deals 115% damage, and the second hit deals 130% weapon damage. Now, as you guys can see, these are my active abilities currently on the Great Axe. Like I said there, we've got Reap. Reap is really, really good. It can pull enemies in. It can group enemies up. If you're doing it with PvP, it can drag people back towards you or move them out of the way if they're trying to cast an ability or something along that manner and can really keep people stunned for a good amount of time. Now, I'm making this video at around player level 40 just because that's solidly into the mid game. Now, I've played this all the way through to the end, so obviously I'm going to go over like kind of the main end game goals for this class as well. But this this is kind of like where most players will be kind of getting up to in the coming days or will have already passed so you can make this build applicable to what I've got in this video so I kind of thought it would be a good point to record this video at. So with that in mind I've got the Great Axe to level 14 so I've then upgraded Reap. Reap now has an 8 meter range and I will go on to then get Hunger which is where you heal yourself for 30% of the damage done by Reap which again in PvP is very very nice. And of course, then we finish with Fatal Attraction, which is after you do a pull, you spew a spin attack, which does 115% weapon damage. Really nice little combo, just finishes off the Great Axe very nicely there. Then of course, we have Charge, which is the other ability I've got there. I've then upgraded this one so that it deals more damage based on how far you've travelled. And then of course, we could do the final one here, which during the charge, you may press the right mouse button to execute a swing that deals 140 to 165% weapon damage based on how far you've travelled. Personally, I don't go for that one, but you easily could swap out one of the passives if you want to get that one as well. And then we go for the ultimate on this when you unlock it, which is Bloodless, where you move 30% faster and deal 15% more damage when looking at a foe within 15 meters. Now, in terms of passives, I like to take Greed at the top right here of the Reaper tree. I then also like to take Executioner's Speed, which is again at the top right. I then take Critical Gains. On the Great Axe as well, on the Reaper Tree. I'll then go move down to Keen Edge, the next point I get in here, because that's a really, really good ability. And then, obviously, like I said, just upgrade Reap further there and take Bloodlust in the end. Then we move over to the Molar Tree, where I use Heavy Pull. And I also take Enduring Strike. These two points allow me to get to Gravity Well, and they're also really good passive, so that's why I take those ones. Then, of course, we take Gravity Well. We take the Crowded Well buff to it, which increases a burst damage by 10% for each foe caught in the Vortex. And finally, we upgrade that to the final one, which is Unyielding, which enables allies to gain a 10% Fortify buff while standing within the well, which is really, really nice. Now again, on this one, it's up to you what you want to take. I really like when holding a Great Axe, gain 10% extra damage when three or more foes are within four meters. Excellent for PvP, even small scale, because there can be three or four people there. 
Also, really, really good in wars, expeditions, loads of main story quests, anything like that. It's pretty much useful for whatever, so I like to take that one. And then I would top off the build by getting Crowded Protection, which is where when you're holding the Great Axe, you gain 10% damage absorption when there's three or more foes within 4 meters of you. So again, when you've got a lot of enemies nearby, you're going to be doing more damage, taking less damage, and it's going to be a really, really good class. Now, of course, we pair this with the Hatchet, and I'll show you guys which abilities we're using on that one as well. As you guys can see here on the Hatchet, we're using Berserk, and we fully upgrade that one. That gives us a movement speed buff of 20% whilst in Berserk mode. We get an active heal every 4 seconds for 30% of your max HP, which is really, really good for sustain in any situation. Trigger and Berserk removes all crowd control effects, so stuns, slows, and roots from the player, which is really, really good. And then the final one here, which is Uninterruptible Berserk, which is while you are in Berserk, your attacks are uninterruptible and cannot be staggered. This is really, really good if you pop this ability and then use your other ones. It works super, super well. And obviously, of course, there with all the extra added on ones. Then I go for, of course, Feral Rush as well. This gives me a sprinting melee attack. I upgrade that one so that if the target is below 30% health, it deals 20% more damage, which is really nice. It's kind of a finishing move and then of course I go for crippling strikes which is in feral rush if you hit someone in the back you cause a root which immobilizes the target for two seconds great in pve if you want to kind of keep mobs in one place and deal a little bit extra backstab damage but excellent in pvp particularly when people get pesky and try to run away you can drop that on behind them and it'll stop them running away for a little while you can then follow this up with maybe a gravity well run back into the hatchet build drop berserk drop raging strikes and you'll be really all over them, so it's a fantastic ability. Then I pair this with, as I said there, Raging Torrent, which is performing the four attacks. I then again upgrade this fully, so I get the hit a target with Raging Torrent grants 20% haste for six seconds. And the final blow here, which is when you press light attack at the end of a Raging Torrent, you deal a final attack dealing 120% weapon damage, making it a five hit chain very, very quickly. So that's really, really nice. Then when you look on this side of the tree, I also take against all odds. I take fortifying strikes, and then I move over to the throwing tree where I take aimed throw, which means you don't have a block with this, but you are able to throw axes, which gives you a bit of ranged potential. And that's one of the main ways to combat ranged players, as well as obviously gap closer with the great axe. It does give you a bit of opportunity to sit back and when they do start throwing fireballs at you, turn around and throw some axes and it really will shake people up. They're not expecting it. Now this paired with the perk critical throw means that you can get headshots with the axe if you actually hit them in the head obviously. And you get a critical chance of a random crit on the throwing axes as well. And on top of this increases critical chance of all attacks by 5% with the hatchet which is really, really good. So it's a really fantastic perk. I obviously take then obviously the ultimate defy death there as well which I really, really like. It gives you a chance to pop some potions, pop some food, pop obviously berserk if you've got it up, and gives you a real good chance to stay alive even when you should potentially die, particularly in wars when there's a lot of CC going off and things, and also expeditions where their bosses hit really hard. That is a perfect opportunity to use this. Now what I would probably get for the last couple of perks here, you could either look down the throwing tree, you could get on fire, which is really really nice because that's every third hit with the thrown axe is a guaranteed crit, so that'll probably be something I'll invest in. And you could also get successful critical hits with the light attacks or a throw regens 10 stamina which is also really really good if you do obviously want to be able to move around more with this build and if you're going to go into light armor like we'll get onto in just a moment that could be really useful I personally would also go with the ones on this side of the tree here where you've got Relentless Fury and this is after a successful heavy attack you gain Empower for 30 seconds, increasing damage for 3 seconds or after 4 attacks. So mixing in a heavy attack in the mix there is really really good after you've got this. Obviously as well you could go for Desperate Refresh which is where all cooldowns are reduced by 2% when hitting an enemy with an attack while your HP is below 30%. Personally it's a really good one and a must have one for me here which I'll be getting definitely next is Frenzied Purge which is when you get when hitting an enemy while your health is below 30% you remove all bleed burn poison dot effects from the player on a 60 second cooldown so again in pvp particularly small scale this is very very useful and really will save your life so certainly worth taking now like i mentioned there you could go either light or medium armor class depending on kind of what you want to do what your play style is personally i'm leaning more towards medium now i need to kind of sort out my armor now i've got to level 40 i've just kind of thrown some random bits on but medium is kind of giving me the extra tankiness particularly in expeditions you notice it a lot when you're playing solo for those questing it's really helpful and of course 
in PvP situations, people can't drop you as quickly. Now, that being said, I really, really enjoy Light Armor. The movement from it feels great. So those real dodges is something I'm very, very much going to miss with going in medium. But personally, for me, the extra resistances have made a huge difference. So that is where I would recommend you guys sit in that medium category. Now, obviously, that gives you plus 10% to damage and healing. And obviously, it gives you... Crowd control debuffs you apply last 10% longer, which is really nice as well because it gives you that opportunity with the gravity well and the feral rush to get those little bit of extra crowd control going on. If you do go into the light one, you'll get 20% bonus damage and healing, so obviously you'll be able to do a lot more damage there, particularly if you're going raw DPS. That's really good, so you could also opt for that, but personally, like I said there, I'm preferring medium, so I'd highly recommend you guys go for medium armor class as well. This is the kind of armor set I'm running now, really cool. And uh, yeah, you can see there I've got the Twitch skins for the hatchet and the great axe, which look actually pretty Pretty nice. So, yeah, that's where I'm at with those ones. Now, moving on to attributes, as you guys will see here. Like I said, I am at player level 40, so this is kind of like the mid-game kind of setup for the Barbarian class. And as you guys will see, I've got 150 points into Strength and 105 into Constitution. Nothing in Dex, nothing in Intelligence, nothing in Focus. Now, you could absolutely put some points into Dexterity, particularly because the Hatchet secondarily scales off of Dexterity. Whereas for me, personally, I like to go full Strength, but there is Dexterity as an option, particularly when you get some of those points from Gear as well. This can be really really nice now if i hover over the bar you guys can see that i've committed 62 points by choice of attributes to strength 13 from equipment and 78 from item buffs which is really really nice it means i'm getting a ton of item buffs onto my strength and that's perfect same with constitution i've gone 53 committed points equipment 7 and 45 from item buffs so Basically, what I've been doing is 2-2, two, two. so every time I level up, I do a couple into Strength, one into Constitution, and then the next time, two into Constitution, one into Strength, all the way up until I got 50 con. Once I got 50 con, I've been doing 3-1 to one Strength to Constitution, so that means that every time I level up, I'll put three points into strength, and then every other level, I'll do a point or two into constitution just to keep that rising with it as well, so you're not completely squishy, and it gives you a ton of survivability when paired with, obviously, that berserk, because it's 30% of your maximum HP, which is really, really nice. Now, obviously, as well, you want gear that boosts your strength, so obviously, getting those extra perks is really, really helpful, and obviously, gear that boosts constitution. Like I said there, you can get gear that boosts dexterity if you want to. Getting up to that first threshold of 50 points is really nice for the 5% chance to crit. But personally, for me, it's not worth it over the strength, particularly when pairing with the Great Axe, which solely scales off strength, because it makes this weapon do a ton of raw damage, and the Hatchet do a lot of damage too, even if it is just on a slightly smaller scaling system. Now, with the strength uh, attributes, obviously, you get the perks here. So the first one gives us plus 5% damage to melee weapon light attacks. Second one is 10% melee damage with heavy attacks. And the third perk here is 50% stamina damage from melee weapons and light and heavy attacks, which is really, really good. Constitution 50 is really important because it means all consumables are 20% stronger. Hands down one of the best perks in the game. So you certainly want to get that on pretty much any class that you build, but certainly on this one. And of course, pairing this then with the increased max health by 10% of your physical armor. When you get up to medium armor, again, another reason medium is really, really good because it just gives you that extra boost with this 100 points in constitution. So you want to try to keep that about 100, 110, and then the rest all wants to be pretty much going into strength there. By the time you get to end game, you want to aim to be on at least 250 if not 300 on strength and around 150 to 200 on constitution depending how you balance out those attributes now a couple of tips here with playstyle it's going to be a very good close range class as you guys can imagine the gravity well you can suck people in keep them stuck there for a while get some free hits on also you've got reap where you're able to pull people back towards you and obviously when you upgrade that you do the spin at the end which increases the damage output from it and on top of this you've got charge this can be used as a gap closer a runaway a reposition whatever you need it to be it's very very good and on top of that can be used for movement utility just while you're questing and things which is always really really nice then you pair this with Berserk, this gives you movement speed, heal, you know, all that kind of good stuff, extra damage, really, really helpful in all situations, particularly in PvP though, because you're going to be able to heal throughout the fight, even when you're not potting, and expeditions for the same reason, which is going to give you an advantage over a lot of other players, and does really, really well in the wars. Pairing this then with Feral Rush, where you're able to stun people if they run away, or indeed you can get involved third party in a fight if you're 
teammate is fighting somebody else or a different mob, you come and backstab them with that. They can then back up, heal, pop a potion or whatever, and that player can't chase them. You get free hits. They'll probably turn around and fight you already on half HP, or they'll be indeed inclined to run away. So you kind of get a big advantage from using that perk there as well. And pairing that finally with Raging Torrent just allows you to put out some massive damage. If you get a Feral Rush Strike on somebody, they're stunned in the back, you drop a Raging Torrent, you're going to do tons of damage, if not fully kill an opponent with that ability. So those two alone are really, really good when paired with Berserk to give them the damage buff. It's an unstoppable combo from the Hatchet and Great Axe. So it's very, very nice. Now obviously Berserk can be also be used as a reposition, a heal kind of thing to back up, run away quicker and you heal while you're doing it, which is also really nice. And like I said, when you upgrade it, you remove the dots and all that kind of stuff as well, which is really, really useful. On top of this, when you've got aimed throw from the throwing tree, it does allow you to do some ranged damage, as I said there, because ranged is probably your biggest opponent, I would say, when you're using this class. You're going to be getting outdone by people who are using things like the Fire Staff Ice Gauntlet combo, particularly when you get slowed, which is why you come in with, like, the Great Axe Charge, try and close that gap, suck them in with the Gravity Well, the Reap, keep them in there, stun them with the Hatchet, and then obviously use the Backstab ability. It's really kind of like the best thing to do is combo them in close quarters, but obviously closing that gap is going to be your most important thing. So when you've got ranged throw, that just allows you to, you know, throw some axes at them, get a little bit of ranged damage so that if they are just completely kiting around, you can die around yourself you can throw an axe dodge throw an axe dodge keep berserking so that you're doing extra damage with it and you're healing so any damage they do is negated they're eventually going to get bored and run away or somebody else is going to come in and help you if you're in a war or indeed they might just switch to a second room maybe they're running fire staff and rapier try to come in with that and that's where you can absolutely combo people so it's just about playing the time to your advantage don't forget as well just to walk up to enemy players when you're using this class. They'll see you coming towards them. They'll start dodging. They'll start popping abilities. You can often just avoid enemy abilities by walking or running towards them. And again, you can just make them run out of stamina by walking. You've then got your charge. You've then got all your stamina left to be able to do all of your abilities. And it will give you a huge advantage going into the fight. So hopefully you guys have found this video useful and informative. Hopefully you can get on the battlefield in whatever content you want to be doing and dominate with the Barbarian class. It's by far my favourite build in the game and I'm absolutely loving playing it so hopefully now I've brought you guys this video you guys can also enjoy the power that is this class. If you have enjoyed today's video and found it useful and informative please do drop me a like on the video down below as it is much much appreciated. If you are new here to the channel and you want to see more new world content then be sure to subscribe down below with the notification bell on. We've got tons and tons of new world content coming up. Some really cool features, some tips and tricks, some guides, all that kind of good stuff as well as any news that we do get along the way as well so make sure you stay tuned to the channel for that. Other than that if you would like to support me directly here as a content creator on the platform there is the join button for the membership program just below today's video if you would like to come and catch some of the live streams i'm doing over on twitch that will be linked in the comments and in the description as well i'm going live every single day so it'd be great to see some of you guys over there and join in with that aspect of things and finally as always guys thank you very much for watching take care and peace